Toki. So, a lot of people in the Toki Pona community will have seen the half as interesting video about Toki Pona. There's been all sorts of responses to it. I just wanted to give my thoughts on it. Not focusing on any grammatical spelling errors. The community have more than done that work already. Uh, the pinned tweet actually is a comprehensive list of that. So I'm going to be a bit more general. I'm mostly aiming this video, I think, at people who don't know much about Toki Pona, but found this video interesting and want to find out a bit more about it. Right, before we even start the video, actually, the title, The Language You Can Learn in a Day, I can't say that's 100% wrong. Um, I know there, a man once learned Icelandic in a week. So I'm not going to say it's impossible to learn Toki Pona in a day. Um, if you're Starting with Toki Pona with the uh, expectation that you can learn it all in one day, that's probably not going to be realistic. That is if you mean a calendar day. Maybe 24 hours of study, you can memorize all the words in Toki Pona and learn off the grammar rules. That's not going to make you fluent. You're not going to be having full conversations immediately after that 24 hours. But that is uh, that is definitely doable. But... Being able to speak it fluently is a whole other thing. Like, there's practice involved. But that practically goes without saying, so. Toki, Nimi Mili Sam. Sina Sola Alasona. If you couldn't understand what I just said, don't worry, you're not having a stroke. I was just speaking Toki Pona. Comprised of 120 words, Toki Pona is the only language you can learn in a matter of hours. 30 on average. Okay, yeah, so that's time spent learning the vocab and grammar. I'd say that's about as long as it took me. Uh, about 30 hours on different memorized courses and you know I read through the book a few times. That's realistic for learning the words, yes. Literally means language of good because it's super hard to whine or complain if you've only got 120 words to choose from. Oh that's not true, I can whine and complain in Tokipona all day long. Oh, it's very easy to whine and complain in Tokipona. Oh, uh, aleli ike, uh, mi yo yan pona ala, uh, Yan lili mi li wila emani ale mi. Yan oli mi li li wila ala umpa. Sielo mi li pakala. Noka mi li pakala. Mi nasa. Those were some of the life problems of the typical American dad in a sitcom. No, I complain all the time, so do not challenge me. <laughs> the sentence I am eating appears relatively easy to construct in Tokipona, which sounds like mi moku. But if you're around a group of cannibals who also speak Tokipona, saying mi moku could spell trouble since the word moku means eat and food, and they would hear I am food. Okay, that's hit on an important point, which is uh, context. All languages have this to some extent. If human languages did not rely on context at all, we wouldn't need to invent programming languages to give instructions to computers. For example, if you're speaking in English and you say, I like the fish, um, that takes on a very different meaning if you're perusing the menu in a restaurant as opposed to if you're admiring your friend's aquarium. Um, you mean a very different thing from liking the fish in these two situations. The difference is that Tokipona leans more heavily on context, so the meanings of words can kind of flex more in response to the context that you're in. If uh, some cannibals are cooking you up in a big pot, I don't know why you'd want to be telling them that you're eating. Like, the example they gave, um, if you're in a restaurant uh, and you say, I'm eating, nobody's going to assume that you mean I am food. That would uh, not make sense in that context. So that kind of uh, ambiguity isn't a problem. But while well, having a limited vocabulary limits miscommunication, only the basics can be communicated. You can communicate a lot more than the basics. There is a video that somebody made explaining uh, non-Euclidean geometry in Tokipona. Um, I have seen recently a write-up of the theory of relativity in Tokipona hieroglyphics. There was a very early example of around when the official Tokipona book came out where somebody wrote um, a contract of sale using Tokipona. So you can communicate far more than the basics, you just need to kind of really know what you're doing when you're putting those explanations together. There's also no room for polite speech. If you want to say thank you, you're stuck with pona, which is a generally positive affirmation more than an expression of gratitude. There's no room for polite speech. Um, it is very often said in the Toki Pona community, politeness is assumed. So it might be more accurate to say that there's no room for impoliteness. People are going to assume you're being polite by default, unless you're 
literally like shouting at them or insulting them or something you're just kind of assuming everyone's being nice you know we're all we're all friends here these are the three words that describe numbers. If there's one of something, you can say one. If there's two, you can say two. And if there are more than two, you say moot for many, meaning that any number between three and infinity is the same. People also use Luca, which is the word for hand, to mean five. People are constantly trying to come up with number systems for Tokipona that will catch on. But I think the prevailing attitude is um, we're not, recreationally speaking, a constructed language to do, like, accountancy. So... We're not too worried about expressing large numbers. That's that's kind of my, it's like, it's hard to communicate these numbers. So, you know, don't worry about it. Just say mute. It's just, it's a lot. W you know, people get the gist. And if you're trying to describe your morning routine, it could get complex real fast. Describing something in Tokipona takes a lot more words and careful structuring. This means talking in Tokipona relies heavily on noun phrases, which always come after the words they describe. If you wanted to talk about your coffee, you'd have to get pretty creative because there's not even a word for plain old drip coffee, which would make talking about your Starbucks triple shot caramel macchiato with foam incredibly difficult. These are only some of the ways you can refer to coffee in Tokipona, and you probably have to settle for saying sui telo waba kapeken namako and kule ayo kasi, or sweet energetic water with embellishment and color of wood. Uh, no. <laughs> the video has shown itself to be incorrect here. You wouldn't have to settle for this because five seconds ago, he showed four other options for how to say coffee that are much shorter. Okay, so th this is kind of getting at the heart of the kind of misconception about how Tokipona works and how Tokipona kind of challenges people's expectations about how a, a language is supposed to work. Even people who have learned Tokipona and have started speaking it, you see still kind of have this attitude for a while after they have kind of started trying out Tokipona. So if you no longer have a specific word for every thing, it's natural for people to assume that, oh, instead they're just going to make these you make compound words and they will just indicate every little thing instead. This doesn't really work. A lot of people kind of criticize Tokipona on the assumption that this is how it works, which, which it's not. And even if it did, it would not be a very efficient way to speak. Because if you just look at that on screen, that nobody has time for that. <laughs> that would get old fast. If you had to do that in every sentence you spoke, that will get old really fast, which I think is what people find. So people learn Tokipona and then they start speaking like this and it gets, it's frustrating. <laughs> so that lazy voice in the back of their head is like, oh, look, we're, I don't want to say all of it. I don't want to say sui telo wawa kepika namako and kule iokasi. That's, that's too much work to figure that out. So instead you're just going to say uh, telo seli, hot drink. And if your previous sentence was talking about your morning routine, when they hear hot drink, they're going to know you either mean tea or coffee. You don't need to tell them that it has the color of wood. Nobody needs all of that information. Only the information about coffee that the listener needs to understand you're talking about coffee. So this is how it in practice trains you. Like earlier when I said there's a difference between knowing all the words, knowing what the grammar rules are, and the practice of actually speaking. And this is the kind of thing that you learn by doing and dealing with whether or not the person you're talking to kind of gets what you're saying or not that it teaches you this skill of only using the words that are necessary to get across what you're trying to get across which is how tokipona trains you to simplify your thoughts to the essentials if you look at kind of long-term tokipona community members on on twitter for example it's rare to see them use a tree word phrase to describe a thing. Instead of what this is kind of trying to do is you think of an English word, you come up with an unambiguous Tokipona equivalent, no matter how long, you speak that to the other person, they translate it back into English in their head and then understand it. That is too much work. So that meaning gap that's created by you not having thousands and thousands of words to use to describe everything, it's not filled by compound words. It's filled by two things, uh, circumlocution and context. Circumlocution is when you don't have a particular word, so you express yourself in a different way to kind of talk around the term that you don't have access to. So for example, if you're 
trying to tell somebody the tunnel into town is closed, but you forget the word closed. You say, we can't take the tunnel into town. And you've communicated the same thing. If you forget the word for tunnel instead, you say, we have to take the long road into town. In both cases, you've still gotten your point across. You just needed to rephrase it a bit. This is something that you kind of do when translating things into Tokipona. And it's a valuable skill because if you're ever learning a natural language, French, Japanese, Spanish, in future, um, because it lets you start speaking to people sooner. You know, as long as you have that confidence that you can you can express yourself even if you forget a word or two. And that helps you learn faster. Both of these things come into play if you're speaking a language like English. But the difference is you don't know going into a conversation that you're going to need to be paying that much attention to context. When you go into a conversation in Tokipona, you know from the jump that you, the speaker, need to be leveraging some of this context you know, your gestures, where you are, um, if it's a newspaper article, what the picture is in the article, um, what might be on screen during a video. You use these context clues to make it easier for you to express yourself. And the listener, on the other hand, also knows that they need to be paying attention to this and trying to kind of meet you halfway to understand this. And if this sounds like a lot of work, just keep in mind that there are expectations going into an English conversation too. That expectation is that you, the speaker, and the listener have both invested the time to memorize about 40 or 50,000 words. That is also a lot of work, which takes years of education. And then there's a whole mess over people who don't get access to that same education. And the words that they use are used as an indicator of in-group, out-group stuff. In Tokipona, you're both just uh, working together to express yourselves to each other and understand each other. Um, if you're speaking English, you can express um, yourself perfectly clearly and people can still get snotty with you about the way that you have expressed that. How many of you went to school through English, asked, can I go to the bathroom? And despite understanding what you wanted, they told you, may you go to the bathroom? and made you say it that way. So the teacher wanted uh, a certain context awareness from you that you're supposed to say this in a more prestigious way, a way that's supposed to indicate that you have an education, a way that indicates in-group status, instead of just focusing on what you are trying to communicate. With its very limited alphabet, it's challenging to use this system to write out a name or location that isn't already defined in the Tokipona Dictionary. This is just one of the many ways I could write out S-A-M, but for H-A-I, I'd be S-O-L because the letter H isn't in the Tokipona alphabet. This is a small correction, but normally when you start learning Tokipona, you would Tokipona is your name or take a Tokipona name that works within the Tokipona pronunciation. As far as native speakers though, Tokipona has not. I, I think that actually technically might not be true. There is one member of the Tokipona community who kind of is already in a multilingual household who claims he taught his children Tokipona from a young age, as well as like, I think, English and Finnish. I might be remembering wrong. This is like a trilingual household, but one of the languages his kids learned from the start was Tokipona. So they may technically be considered native speakers. Most of the 1,000 plus people who speak it learned it online, as the language boasts large Facebook and Reddit groups, with the r slash Tokipona page having amassed more than 13,000 members. This is one question that is on everyone's mind, that nobody really has a good way of estimating the number of people who can speak Tokipona. Especially because the subreddit, at least the way it looks to me, leans more heavily towards learners and because people can subscribe to that subreddit and then not be active. So that 13,000 might not indicate even the number of people actively using that subreddit, but then you also have the number of people on Twitter. Um, there's a few different Facebook groups with good numbers. There's Discord servers. And even if you can accurately estimate the number of active users in each of those communities, you can't really tell how much is overlapping in the users. So it is a vexing question, how many people can speak Tokipona? It seems to be a few thousand at least. Like if I had to come up with a number off the top of my head, I would say we're approaching like 10,000 proficient speakers of Tokipona. But that is literally just like a guess off the top of my head. I 
have no way of really knowing. And last year, Tokipona was added to Minecraft in case you were interested in making Minecraft borderline unplayable. It's also been taught to artificial intelligence, and one study found that machines were better at recognizing speech patterns of Tokipona than English because of its simplicity and limited vocabulary. This paper is interesting. I think it's from about 2014. So one of the comments even in this video kind of says, inventing a language to talk to computers is literally what a programming language is. So this paper is for something different. This is about um, speech recognition. So what they did, they didn't even use Tokipona. What they did was they invented a language called Robot Interaction Language or Roila that was heavily based on Tokipona that was supposed to make it easier for a computer to understand what a person is saying because it didn't have multiple words that sounded similar. I actually own the book about it. I got this a few years ago out of curiosity. Um, it's interesting stuff, um, but this was a few years ago. I think voice recognition has come on a lot in the meantime, so I'm not sure if this is still relevant to speech recognition today. But if learning a new language just so you can talk to AI robots seems a little much, don't worry, you can just wait until the AI has killed us all instead. I do agree that AI will someday kill us all. Okay, it looks like the rest of the video is just an ad, so um, I'll leave a link in the description to any of the uh, Tokipona community members that I talked about. I'll also include some links to some Tokipona communities just in case for anyone who's interested in learning a bit more about it. Let me put it this way. If your previous sentence was about what you do in the morning and then you say, I drink a black drink, unless someone's having a pint of Guinness with their breakfast, they're going to assume it's coffee.